Hi and welcome. Uh, this project for this episode is a really quick one. It's a tap follower. I have two versions of this project. All the video shot was of the first version being made. And after I finished making, I decided that uh, there could be some definite improvements. So I went ahead and made a second version. Uh, drawings for both will be in links below. I hope you enjoy. So this is uh, a quick project. I'm going to make a spring-loaded tap follower to help lead a tap in on the lathe or the mill. Um, drawings as usual will be available online uh, in the link provided below. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, my A2 tool steel, the uh, pointed part of it that I will be heat treating after. Uh, that will be a new experiment. And then move on to the follower that goes inside the tube along with the tube and the and that's it, and then we'll get going. So let's move on. So this is uh, 1032 tool steel, 3 16 inch stock. Uh, they sell it in three foot lengths. And I've already taken the liberty of tapping with 1032 threads off camera. I'm going to chamfer this end a little bit, and then I'm going to turn it around and turn the point on it. This is the point of the tap follower. And just in case you were wondering, uh, since they sell it in three foot lengths, uh, this was my first chance to get to use my uh, tap follow. I mean, my uh, my lathe spider that I uh, made in the previous project, and uh, I still need to tighten it in to hold the center because you can see that even though it's tight on the other end, this has got quite a bit of slop. If I actually turn the lathe on, this is going to bang all over the place. Being tool steel, hitting your threads inside probably make that uh, a really bad idea. So, anyways, I'm going to adjust this and then we're going to move on. All right, let's go for a quick chamfer. Nice. Okay, so we're going to use the cross slide to, uh, or the compound, not the cross slide, use the compound to do a 15 degree bevel on the end to make the point. So uh, let's give it a go. There's currently quite a bit of stick out, so I'm taking small bites so I don't deflect the part too much. And just as I say that, I take a big one. That's probably good. All right, so. Uh, we're now going to do the inside follower piece that slides inside the half inch shank that'll be in the, you know, in the mill or the chuck. And this, the tip screws into this part inside. Uh, so first I'm going to face it, then I'm going to cut it three quarters of an inch, then face the other side, and then drill and tap for 1032 uh, threads for this to mate in with it. So let's go. All right, so we're... Uh, we're, we're about to center drill, drill and tap for the 1032 threads to hold the point. So I start with a much smaller drill bit than, a tap, than the tap drill is for the 1032 threads. Uh, thinking that this would be better to build up from small to large, but it turns out in the long run, uh, especially on the half inch piece, this was a mistake because the small drill bit and the hard steel uh, deflects a little bit. Wasn't a problem on this part, but it is on the next.
this is the final tap drill size here. All right, so here's just to show you where the part goes. So the tip screws into the follower that runs inside. And uh, that leaves us with this. So let's do the main part of the, the main body of the unit. Okay, so we're about to center drill, tap, and ream the small hole side of the half inch stock which will allow this pin to go through, but prevent the follower inside from going through. So we're going to drill and ream, I said tap, we're going to drill and ream this first. And then we're going to flip the part around, we're going to drill out the center for this diameter, and then tap the other side for the set screw that holds the spring in. Alright, let's go. So watch here is my center drill tip breaks off. I have to fix this by grabbing a eighth inch carbide end mill and uh, removing the high speed steel chunk out of the middle. Now I'm kind of screwed. So at first when I'm stepping up in drill sizes, this is actually a fairly small drill bit. Um, I noticed the wobble, but I think it's because of the initial damaged cut after I had to drill this out with an end mill. And so I go... I continue this way, what ends up happening is this wobble causes the drill bit tip to deflect, which makes this bit and the following drill bit veer it a, a little bit of an angle. So the next drill bit, when I drill all the way through the part, is actually at a slight angle, and it's off by about 80 thousandths on the opposite side. Huge mistake. To be honest, I'm not even sure if this drill, the previous drill, but even drilled a round hole because look at the wobble in this one. Kind of odd. Anyone got any suggestions? I'm all ears. Okay, so now we're doing the uh, big side. We're going to drill with an N, and then we're going to ream with a 5 16 Now you get to see the end result of drilling all the way through, and other than a straight line along the axis of the blade. On this one, depth is important. the way the drill bit's wobbling. It kind of makes me feel the hole's not centered that's it's following. We might be making this part again. All right, so now we're going to just do the final tapping. Um, and uh, this will be for the set screw that holds the spring that pushes against the plunger. All right, so here's the uh, final assembly. Before this gets heat treated to make it harder, uh, it's, as I said earlier, it's A2 tool steel, um, air hardened. Um, 
I also need to put Loctite on this part, but I want to do that until after the heat treat, otherwise Loctite will just be broken down. So this is what it's going to look like. Uh, there it is through. And that. Oops. Get a thread started first. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, there we go. There's a tap follower now. I think if I had to do this again, I would uh, make a few changes. Um, right now, there's a two tenths of an inch of material inside here that the follower runs up against. I think if I made the front tapered, it would look nicer. So have a bunch of so make this bigger and then taper the front of it, and uh, have the inside a little longer so in a long a little bit longer spring so I can get more throw because right now it's about half an inch. So there we go. All right. Hi. So quick uh, epilogue. I uh, ended up making some changes to this design. Uh, like I was thinking about the first time around, I just made another one. A um, couple things I did wrong. So one, when I was drilling the hole. On the small side uh, of the first one, I drilled with the small drill bit all the way through to make it easier when I drilled from the other side, thinking, hey, what a great idea. Problem is, small bit decided to wander as it was going through the tool steel, so uh, it came out at an angle at the other side and wasn't exactly centered. It was off by maybe 40 thousandths, which is quite a bit. Um, I thought it would be nicer to have a little chamfer on the end rather than just square. It would look nicer. Uh, Add a little bit of knurling on the end, just for appearance mostly. It really doesn't maybe to get it in and out of the drill press that might or the the mill. Excuse me. Um, uh, in addition, the follower for the rod uh, was originally three quarters of an inch in the first version, and the reason I made it so long was that I didn't want the rod bending back and forth. But because I made the hole for the rod um, about a half an inch deep through this material on the second go around um, it's a lot of supporting material and it's a pretty close fit so it actually doesn't wobble too much so now the only purpose of this is to uh, support the spring um, the spring I bought one inch springs originally because that was my design uh, this actually need to be longer so McMaster car sells some spring by the foot as it were and you cut off what you need so you'll notice this is a little bit longer than a foot um, also I uh, second time around I switched to stainless steel for the main shaft uh, 30403 I think it is um, 603 603 I can't remember numbers are terrible in my head uh, Anyways, the uh, this is easy machining stainless steel, and uh, um, it made it easier to drill through significantly than the tool steel, the uh, A2 that I was using the first time around. Uh, also, I've modified my drawing, which I will update and provide uh, with the new dimensions, because originally I was drilling all the holes to exact size, and obviously that wasn't going to work out too well. So... Uh, uh, there was no there was no play so this still is a really tight fit but I drilled it over by four thousandths and the back is over by two thousandths so um, let's just assemble it and see what it looks like all together so there it is so Good to go, tap follower. Simple project, you can do it in a couple hours. I uh, rebuilt the whole second one from scratch in, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. So, thanks. See you next time.